Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning and welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Bill Allen. I'm sitting in for Winston again this morning. And uh, we got a great show lined up for you, so stay with us. First, we want to look at our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. Uh, we are looking at a high today of about 81 with a low of 67. Our tide chart today, our tides today, the high is at 6.39 a.m. and the low at 1.17 p.m. So it ought to be a great day no matter what you like to fish, incoming or outgoing, you should have it if you can get out. Looking over at Appalach, it's uh, two feet and steady. And uh, Choctaw, same thing, it's about 1.1 and fairly steady. If you hadn't had a chance to get to the river and chase some of those brim, you are missing out. Cause whether it's fly rod or cane pole, they're just getting torn up over there and it's, uh, it's just a great time to be over there. Before we take our first break, I wanna remind you about the uh, Highland Park uh, feast over there and if you haven't been you need to go because this is a lot of fun a lot of great guys and a lot of fantastic food so just a reminder there all right we're going to take our first break be right back with our special guest good morning welcome back i am joined as i am oftentimes by my buddy mark cowart how are you doing this morning mark good bill good to be here thank you i appreciate you coming in before we get into the fishing uh i want to talk just a minute about uh hunting season is upon us um, archery season bow season starts october the 25th we got a couple of weeks and I know most of you have probably done it, and I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, but there are some things that you need to do. It's all about safety. It's all about having a good time. Check your tree stands. You know, whether they're climbing stands or ladder stands or anything else, you know, check your, check your tree stands. Make sure everything's tight. Make sure they're in good working order. Check, check the straps, okay? Make sure there's not any wear on it or anything else. And also, you know, your safety harness. And yes, you do need to wear a safety harness out there. And I know a lot of people, you know, kind of balk at that, but, uh, but it is, you know, falling 15 feet is not a lot, no of, not a lot of fun. And I know you've bow hunted in, in the past and still shoot some. And it's just, when you start with the bows and the crossbows, you need to take a little time before you go out and start practicing with them to inspect them. You know, mm -hmm. look at the limbs. If you've not experienced a limb breaking on a bow, mm -hmm. you've missed something. You have missed something, <laughs> and you just want to keep missing it. But yeah, check the check the limbs. Just you know, inspect the limbs. Look at your cables. Look especially at your bow strings. They can wear. Make sure they're waxed good. Make sure you don't have anything wearing in there that's going to cause them to break. That's also a tremendous experience if you haven't done it. Um, and you know, check your. Check the manual that comes with these bows. See what they recommend as far as, you know, a, a regular uh, a maintenance program. I know some of them you still put a drop of oil on pins and things like that. And if you have any question and if you're not sure or you see something in a limb that might be separating or a crack, take it down to C&G. Go see Ronnie and those guys. They are experts in the field. They'll inspect those bows for you and help you with your maintenance and, and, and uh or do it for you. So it's very important that you inspect it before you start. Same thing with the crossbow, and of course they hold a tremendous amount of power. You really have to be careful with those. But just take a little time before you go out and start you know, setting those pins and getting ready to inspect your stands and, and inspect your equipment, make sure that it's, it's safe that when you're out there. So that's, that's our little quick hunting segment. And it's gonna be more too, because I know there's a lot going on. A lot of guys that I talk to, we've uh, you know, we've been working our stands and, and mm -hmm. uh, plots and stuff, so very excited about what's coming up. That's All right, well, let's talk what we both know about a little bit is, is fishing. And, you know, we did, a while back, we did a tip show, you know, right. and I had done one. And the thing that I get asked about a lot that, that I really was not too surprised that people don't know, but if you want to save money on your reels, loosen the drag at the end of the day. Yeah, it's a lot of people will get out they hook their first fish and their drag just is 
hanging. It just doesn't want to give. And what happens is people don't realize there's a series of like Teflon washers or stainless washers built down in there, real, real, t real small. Well, when you keep it tightened down, any moisture will cause just enough friction in there to keep it from coming loose. And so at the end of every day, when you're rinsing your equipment off, back your drag off enough that you can just pull and it comes loose. I mean, it'll, it, it'll release. I've had more comments about that than I have anything else really that, that we've Absolutely. talked about on here. And it's gonna save you a fortune. Reels oh, are yeah. expensive. And if you just, you know, when, you, when you're tightening them, you're compressing those, those washers Absolutely. and those discs. And it, you know, it's just a simple thing to loosen it up. Now the other thing that I know that we do constantly and talk about, plugs are expensive. Uh, yeah, they, they are. Spoons are expensive. And uh, that's, that shouldn't be uh, news to anybody, no. but uh, the best, there's two great ways to save money like that. One is don't lose them. Now, sometimes you can't help it. How often do you check your leader? All right, well, my leader, I check my leader after every time I catch a fish. Mm -hmm. Every time I hook up, I check my leader. And about halfway through a day, if, if it's been a slow day, I'm still gonna run my fingers up and down the leader. If there's a nick in it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. Bill, ties a fairly long leader. So he can retie several times before he'd have to retie yeah. the leader. Yeah. I'm not quite as long on a leader. I'm 18 inches typically, but I can change it out at least two or three times before I'm gonna get down to where I don't have enough leader. Yeah, and, and that's that's true. You need to start with at least 18 inches, mm -hmm. and depending on what you're fishing. And you that, know, is, that is a fact. You have a little longer for swim baits and things like that. But, you know, when you're paying eleven, twelve dollars for plugs, yes, it's a simple thing to check your leader. Now, hey, there's oyster shells out there. There's all kind. You know, you, you're gonna from time to time you're gonna lose them, but I mean, you're don't wrong. don't lose them when you can prevent it. That, that's that that's a fact. And the other thing that I've been doing for years, and, and again that I get comments about, is just carry a little three dollar Tupperware water bottle with you. That's exactly right. When you change those plugs, when you go from, you know, when you change plugs, you take your top water plugs and just dunk them down in there. Take your spoons, mm -hmm. dunk them down in there. Anything that could rust, you know, if you fish top water early in the morning, you wind up fishing four or five hours. By the time you get home, or you get to the landing and you're washing them down, that salt water's already dried on those things. That's exactly, the, that's right. Take a minute, dunk those things out, put them on, and it's gonna save you a ton of money mm -hmm. in replacing stuff because, hey, salt water rusts things. That's that's Big right. Big surprise, but yeah. it rusts things. And it does it quick. And, and if you take a plug, quick. and if and I'm, it's bizarre to me, but you can take a plug that you don't rinse off, throw it in your box, let's say your top water bait, mirror lure, it, uh, a top pup, whatever it might be, and you throw it back in your box, you hadn't rinsed it off. You go back two or three days later, you won't have some. You'll have rust on those on all the hooks around that one bait. And that's very. It's crazy. It, it's odd, but it does it. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. Come back with the Mark's brought a ton of stuff. We're gonna talk fishing. All right, welcome back. Uh, but, you know, we were off camera there we were just discussing a little bit about there are so many resources available out today that it's not too difficult to take advantage right. of it's like you know panhandle outdoors is on youtube right you know if you miss one or you want to go back and see a show or something somebody talked about you found interesting hopefully you know it's there for you and also i mean you, you explore a lot of but you have things that you put on youtube right. you and michael do that you put videos on right. there you do tip thing but you were just saying, well, you know, you, you feed off of other people. Right. As well. I, I had, a, uh, Michael and I have a YouTube channel. It's called Team Shallow Tales. Shallow Tales, all one word, Team Shallow Tales. And um, it, a guy had gone on and made a comment about a, a short video we had put up. And I clicked on his channel. We have a YouTube channel. He had a channel. And he's a local guy. He's a kayak fisherman. And he had some outstanding video of him catching redfish off the Tyndall Bridge or Hathaway Bridge. And it was really, I was telling Bill, I kind of felt stupid there because I know you can do it, but we've never gone to do it. No, yeah, I mean, And really. so, you know, you see eight or nine kayaks out there and you wonder what they're doing and, and your mindset is, well, those guys, why are they fishing there? Mm -hmm. I can tell you why, because there's a school of redfish there and they know they're there. It led to a tremendous day. It, right? it did, you know, it, it. Michael and I learned from this guy's YouTube channel we went and did it on Sunday and had a blast doing it. Caught redfish, caught sharks, caught uh, big Spanish, 
caught a lot of different fish, and you would see the, the a great example of this was the pelicans are going on to hit the water. All of a sudden, the, all the pelicans just sat down in the water, and under them was a school of redfish that you could see every fish. There were 20, 30 fish. Some of them were big fish, 30, 35, 40 inches, and some of them were 23, 28 inch fish. Yeah. But they're sitting there. They're hard to throw to because if you throw a top water, the pelicans are going to try to get it. But <laughs> so, yeah. but yeah. anyway, I mean, you know, there are a lot of resources. And uh, we're lucky to be where we are because we have such a, a wide variety of fishing opportunities true. right here. That's true. That's very true. And, uh, you know, like I said, you take advantage of some of these resources. You know, I mean, you can find you know, how to do anything on YouTube. You no, know, I type the fact. certain flies and things like that. And, it, you, you know, you just find the right guy on there, and it's uh, it just makes life life a whole lot easier. Right. You know, last year, we uh, earlier in the year, we did a, um, a segment on um, uh, soft baits, the Z-Man baits in particular, and how we rig them and how we were fishing them. Mm. I had so many people contact me. Z-Man asked me just to make a YouTube instructional video, and we did it. And within a week, it had over 200 hits. I don't know how people knew to even look for it. It's kind of it, amazing. It, it, people are always searching. For yeah, they are. You know, yeah. and so anyway, but there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, like you say, Winston Show, Panhandle Outdoors. It's you can go on YouTube. And you can find an old. Um, um, an old show that something that would be in particularly interesting just to you. Um, we did a crop, we went crappie fishing two yeah. years ago, and that show, if you go look, if you Google crappie fishing in North Florida, that show pops up on a Google search mm -hmm. in the top 10. It's had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people going to watch that, um, which it just shows you people are looking. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and, and and most people are pretty willing to share absolutely techniques and what they do, even where they fish with within reason. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, hey, it's getting a little cooler. It you is. Know, the water's starting to cool down. The temperature's starting to cool down. It's coming. And listen, where we live, don't put your boats up. You know, you're oh, it's coming out. now. If you're not fishing all year, I mean, we don't really target trout too much, but. When it starts we getting do in the cold, and man, that's I love catching those big trout. Big so, trout. I w in this transition, how are you transitioning the way you're fishing? Well, for redfish, um, a good example, Michael and I went out and fished by the bridge in the first part of the day, later in the day, 10, 11 o'clock on Sunday. Then at 2 o'clock, 1.30 or 2 o'clock, Michael and I are up in a foot of water, and we're sight fishing redfish. Yeah. And uh, they, were, they were everywhere. Middle of the day, sun high. Water temperature starting to cool down. These fish are getting more and more active, um, and they're starting to feed. And that's the thing. You, uh, these fish are now. It's like every fish, be it a bass, be it a stripe. As it gets cooler, they start to feed. As it gets toward into the fall, because they're building up their body's resources to carry them through the winter. Um, you know, we change out your baits. Go from, for example, like these Z-Man jerk shads. You go from the lighter colors, the mullet colors, like we love pearl color. And then we start transitioning more to these darker colors. This is the a jerk shad in red bone. Um, the Houdini colors, which is kind of a combination of a, a brown to silver, um, or the even like we did in the winter. You go to like very dark colors, mm -hmm. like the root beer colors because these fish change what they're hitting. You start moving away from gold spoons and going more toward these darker spoons. And that's kind of what you kind of got to kind of start putting together um, is the bait changes as their options change. The seasonal. This, yeah, the that's this, the seasonal patterns change. So you kind of want to go to darker things. Um, top water still always great, but as you get into those shallower water fish, that in a foot of water, crystal clear water, that top water is hard for them to hit in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. So you got to throw something a little more subtle. Um, you can throw things like these soft deans, which is a Paul Brown bait, uh, Mirror Lure. Uh, is, they're really mirror, owned by Mirror Lure. Um, these, you can throw it about a foot and a half to two feet of water. They're very slow sinking. They sink level, and they really have a lot of action. There's not a lot of impact. No, when it lands, water. it's a great combination of a top water bait. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it is. I mean, but here's the thing. Look at the size of this. 
you know, everybody's talking about, you know, big baits for right. big fish and stuff like that. But when you, you look at our bait, and, a lot of, and that's not necessarily untrue, but when you look at the rain minnows and some of the things that Absolutely. these fish are feeding on, they're... You they're know, they're a lot they're smaller. Like this. So it you know it's not a bad deal to downsize. Right. Or to vary if you're having trouble. I mean, you plop a big top water out there when it's dead slick and a mm. foot of water. Every every fish there knows you know that, that something just happened. Right. They, they may not react well to it. So you've got to downsize that. Right. You have to do some things that not make such a huge impact when you're you that's know, presenting exactly, that's that right. bait. And uh, you know. We've all pointed out fish to partners, and they've thrown it, you know, right on top of them. Mm -hmm. You know, give yourself some room, past and to the right or to the left, depending on what you think they're doing. That, and, that's right. And and bring it back to that fish. So, uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna take another quick break here and come right back. All right, welcome back. Let's take a minute and take a look at our peak fishing times, brought to us by. Mr. Coward here, and we appreciate that very much. But it is 5.35 to 6.35 this morning. And what I really love, it's 5.05 to 7.05 this afternoon. So uh, it'll be a great time to get out this afternoon and go after me. And you know, these peak fishing times is not a joke. No, mean, it's... If, you, if you track that, and you know, Winston and I have talked about it many times, but it's pretty amazing. It, it, it is. It's How often they're right. It is. I can't tell if it's because, well, you're starting to target the fish those times, so therefore you're out there and you're right. catching them. But the reality is if you're out there eight or nine hours and you go back and you track when you're catching these fish, it follows that pattern pretty yeah, close. It really does. It really does. And i gotta, I got to say this, too. We, we, we talk about this pretty quick. But, you know, Mark is an Edgewater Realty or a great sponsor of this show. And uh, if you have any real estate needs at all, this man, and I've, I've told this before, you know, when Don and I bought a, I bought a condo, you know, and Mark just, he basically negotiated the whole deal. And just recently, my sons and I were, we were looking for somewhere to hunt and uh, told Mark what we were after. And literally within a couple of three weeks, he found us 40 acres, about an hour from here, that just beautiful property and big hardwoods. We got a, got a great price on it. So, you know, all kidding aside, any real estate needs Appreciate that. that you have, you really need to talk to this man. I mean, you know, I'm living proof. The last two things I bought, I bought with Mark. And uh, if I'm looking to buy anything else, that's where it'll be. Well, I so, appreciate and that. I appreciate it very much. But, uh, all right, let's get back into this, uh, you know, transition, transition into time. winter. All right, well, you know, when we did our last clinic at um, Legendary Marine for Skeeter, Skeeter Boats, the one thing that I did, I brought everybody, everybody got a map, and I used West Bay as, mm -hmm. as the example, and it doesn't matter really where you're at. I've got some friends of mine who are guides over in Choctahatchee, uh, Hunter Ray, for example, and Hunter's a great fisherman. Um, they're catching a lot of big redfish and big schools of redfish. These fish are starting to bunch up, yeah. and they're moving away from the traditional spots um, is these fish, again, they're like cattle grazing before the winter comes in. And, you know, they move from the high pasture in the summer to the lower pastures in the winter. It's the same thing for these fish, redfish in particular. Trout's a great example. All of a sudden, trout are scattered. Then you wake up one day, and they're all setting in one spot. And they're going to that deeper water. They're going to um, the warmest water they can find. Well, this time of year, they're following the bait and the bait is gonna lead you to where these fish are. Um, you wanna get out of, uh, typically as you get further into uh, November and December, you're going to jump, start jumping up to a little bit more shallower water for the redfish and they'll start looking for darker bottoms. Mud. Mud, and, it's, and it is, you get into, de into December and January, forget sand bottoms for redfish, you're looking for dark mud bottoms mm -hmm. and it holds the heat it, it, it warms up fast yeah it, it, it does it holds heat um you know there are uh, a lot of places and you can call me and i'll get you a, a, a copy of this map i'll email it to you and it shows you the summer pattern the winter pattern and the transition patterns uh it, it it's just true and the thing that we need to do is adapt our baits to the transition we're talking about top water mm -hmm. 
Here's the thing. This time of year, because we get less and less rain, the water gets clearer and clearer and clearer. So you have to think just a second. You want to make a presentation that's not going to spook a fish. Um, you know, like we tell people, in dirty, murky water, you want a big, loud bait. Clear, ice color water where you can look like it's like looking through the it's air. Like, it's like being in the Bahamas. It's like being in the Bahamas. You want a little smaller bait that has less action. It can still have a rattle. The rattle's fine. Uh, you just don't want a real high pitch rattle. You want a lower, kind of a deeper bass rattle on it. Um, you know, we were talking about the different baits. This is another Paul Brown bait, and it's the, it's the original Paul Brown. And this bait is an excellent transition bait. This one sinks a little faster than this, but when you get in a little bit deeper water, this is really what you want to throw. And if you notice, there's a little pattern here, a little darker. In the, in the warmer months, we're using silver and, and this soft dean, um, using gold or the, like, uh, the show. The holographic. The, right. Type. It's like, uh, you know, in, in the show that was on, uh, I think, yesterday, it was a, um, a crab color on one side. Right. And that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to kind of match what they're feeding on. Crab are super high protein. Shrimp are super high protein. And they're eating those type things. You can throw a, a, a Z-Man shrimps um, in, that, in that little darker color, that Houdini color. And, um, and that's what these fish are feeding on. That's true. And I tell you what, now, you, you, there have been some monster trout caught this year. There have been some big trout caught this year, and a lot of them on these suspended baits. Oh, and that's if you haven't started fishing those, you're missing out because you, you, you'd be amazed, one, at how shallow you can fish these suspended that's, baits. That's right. The right bait doesn't sink very fast. Yeah, it's almost neutral. It, the wind blows here. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't always work that top water so right. all right well listen i appreciate you guys coming in and uh we're going to take uh uh not a break but we're out of here have a great day see you tomorrow thank you thanks for joining us for panhandle outdoors with winston chester panhandle outdoors features hunting fishing and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors join us next time for panhandle outdoors